Did you know that Ikor Array gives out quest lines that rewards nine free exotic armor pieces? During the Spark of Hope questline, Commander Zavala asks you to speak to Ikor at the tower where she will give three exotic armor pieces per class available for you to pick up once you've unlocked all three light subclasses. This is going to be the start of a new video series called Beginner Builds. I'm your host, Caveman PRDR, and let's dive right into it. But before we do, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel as both help out me tremendously as I make content for you guys. Thank you. Let's get on with the video. Once you have completed the Spark of Hope Advent Guardian Rises, a Guardian Rises quest lines as a new character. And once you've completed Risk Reward as an existing character, and once you have all of the light subclasses unlocked, you can unlock today's exotic that we're going to review on Titan, which is the Heart of Ismos Light. This is the Titan chest piece with the armor perk Overflowing Light. Using an ability, Grenade, Melee, or Barricade empowers the other two abilities. Empowering means abilities have faster regen, melees and grenades do more damage, and barricades have more hits. So this is a dedicated exotic for ability spam in PvE, specifically using it to uh, really recharge your uh, strength and uh, discipline, specifically. So uh, we're actually going to be using this on two separate builds that I'm going to show today, but first we're going to break it down on Void. How we're going to use it on Void is we're going to use our melee and grenade first, so that way we can uh, proc uh, grenade kickstart, and then we're going to use our melee ability to uh, start the uh, process of gaining uh, energy back on our other abilities, and then we're going to use bar the uh, rally barricade to get an empowering recharge on the grenade and the melee. That's going to be the cycle of how we generally do the uh, process of getting the energies back. So we're doing, specifically we're doing barricade last, so that way we can get a little bit more cooldown by using double bomber. And we're also gonna use it to automatically collect orbs whenever orbs are nearby with powerful attraction. Now that we've kinda got the step-by-step uh, -step process of how we are cycling the abilities on Void. Let's actually break down the Void build itself. Let's start with the aspects, fragments, and abilities. So we are going to start off with the Ward of Dawn super. This is probably just the general basic uh, super to use for PvE. Unless you're running Ursa Furiosa, but we're not doing this right now, doing that right now, we're just running. Heart of Inmost Light, so for the sake of ease, we're going to go with Ward of Dawn for survivability. We're going Rally Barricade because it's a lower base cooldown than Towering Barricade. Generally, I don't even really use bar Rally Barricade so much to hide behind cover as it is to already be behind hard cover, then use Rally Barricade while you are safely behind cover. Uh, choice of Jump is yours. I'm personally using Shield Throw. It's uh, It doesn't necessarily do a ton of damage, but it is just a, uh, it's at least a safer melee to use because you can use it from a distance to hit an enemy with. I personally like using Vortex Grenade and we're going to pair this with a fragment. So, or actually with a couple of fragments. So I personally like Vortex Grenade for damaging AoE. We're going to be using Offensive Bulwark and Bastion as for aspects. For offensive Bulwark, we're going to be using... Uh, while you have an Overshield or inside a Ward of Dawn, your grenade recharges significantly faster. You have increased melee range and damage, and melee final blows extend the duration of your Overshield. You gain an additional Shield Throw while in Sentinel Shield. And Bastion, cast your Super to grant Overshield to nearby allies. Casting your barricade grants overshield to yourself and nearby allies and empowers it, enabling it to slowly regenerate the overshield of allies bunkering behind it and extend their overshield duration. So this is going to be important to uh, giving overshield to you and your teammates. This is part of the survivability of the build, and this provides an aspect of overshield 
which is going to give you grenade regen on offensive bulwark. So Echo Remnants, your lingering grenade effects have increased duration. So since Vortex is a damaging AoE that applies to Echo Remnants, it lasts longer. We're going to be using Echo of Persistence. Void buffs applied to you, Invisibility, Overshield, and Devour have increased duration. So we're going to have a buff to our Overshield when we are using it. Echo of Undermining. Your Void Grenade weakens targets. So we have Vortex Grenade out there, so not only does it have a longer duration thanks to Echo of Remnants, we also have a longer... It also weakens the enemies while you're killing them. So it makes them even uh, more susceptible to damage with Echo of Undermining. And then for the last Echo, which can really be pers your personal choice, I think in lower end content, I think you can consider Echo of Starvation. Picking up a Void Breach or an Orb of Power grants Devour. So whenever you pick up Orb of Powers, you grant Devour. Devour is a, uh, a fairly chunky uh, health regen. And uh, whenever you generate orbs of power with your build, however you're choosing to do so, you can uh, get Devour once you pick up an orb of power, so this helps out with survivability. And this is going to be one of your primary, probably your main primary way of getting health back for uh, this build, but that's why I'm personally considering that. I think, uh, I think you can go other ways if you want to. So uh, let's say you want to swap out Echo of Starvation for something in higher end content. You could consider Echo of Vigilance. Defeating a target while your shields are depleted gains you a temporary Void Overshield. That will help proc the Offensive Bulwark as well. That could be a way to go. You could use Echo of Instability. Defeating Void Targets with Grenades it grants volatile rounds to your Void Weapons. If you're choosing to use a Void Primary Weapon with this build, I think of Echo of Instability is also really good because you can... Uh, Use this to uh, gain volatile rounds, which I believe counters uh, anti barrier champions. So, this is something to consider. Granted, it, it is kill proct, but you do have that option. We'll go into the uh, stat splits now. Um, you want low mobility, as low as mobility as possible. It's going to be irrelevant to this character. Um, you want as high as Rezzel as possible. Prior prioritizing res on this build because it's 30% damage reduction. Recovery, you don't want to completely tank it, especially if you're going to end up having to play higher end content, but I am a personal believer that you should have some amount of recovery because it's going to be necessary, necessary especially for high end content. You need to have some amount, even if it's a low moderate amount. Discipline on this build specifically, you're gonna to want to have a you're gonna to want to have a fairly a highly moderate amount because you're gonna be using this to uh, gain your grenade energy back and you're gonna be using it to spam for weakening with your grenade. Um, intellect doesn't really matter what you're running it on, uh, in my opinion. And then I want to have a moderately high strength as well, so that way I can have faster recov on the charged melee ability. So we're going to go into the armor mods now. On the helmet, since you're doing a lot of grenade regening and you're using your grenades to weaken targets, I think Ashes to Assets is going to be a good pick here as it will help you supplement, as, you, as getting kills with it will supplement your super energy gains on grenade kills. So, simple enough. You could also swap this out for Heavy Ammo Finder and combo it with Heavy Ammo Scout. That is completely up to you. I think I like Ashes to Assets a little bit better, um, especially for solo play, but that's just me. And uh, I like Harmonic Siphon myself because I like running Void Weapons with this. You're not locked into it. You can use a Kinetic slot if you want. You can use a completely different weapon if you want just to give yourself the usage of the availability and the armor helmet slots. Now we're going to go over the arms piece. I really like using impact induction. Causing damage with a powered melee attack reduces your grenade cooldown, so you're feeding back into the grenade cooldown once you use the melee attack. Remember, you're using that grenade first, and you're using the melee attack, and the melee attack with 
the impact induction is the first part of the grenade cooldown process. We're using grenade kickstart for our armor mod charges. So whenever uh, we're using armor mod, armor mods that give you armor charges or helps with armor charge, they are working together for grenade kickstart to help you get your grenade back. I'm just a big fan of using fast ball. I am a fast ball simp. I, I have to have fastball on all of my builds. Even if it's intrinsic, I have to have it. So I'm personally using fastball. If you can stand throwing a grenade without using fastball, you go right on ahead because there are plenty of other ones to consider. I think bolstering debt isn't bad at all. Grants class ability energy when you cause damage with a grenade. That's very good. We're going to go to the chest piece here. I think for the chest piece... I'm I'm personally taking charged up to increase the number of armor charges that I can carry by one, or the number of them I can carry by one, and then I have two slots available for resistance mods. So I'm going to probably use one for maybe one uh, one elemental or maybe two elemental, and then one uh, maybe sniper or melee resistance or AOE resistance, or maybe even one uh, maybe even one elemental resistance one. Uh, reserve that matches my heavy type that's completely up to you dealer's choice for the leg piece we are running stacks on stacks we're picking up an orb of power grants you one additional stack of armor charge so you get two stacks for the price of one with stacks on stacks and then we are running absolution on our leg piece where it reduces all ability cooldowns each time you pick up an orb of power so when you're cycling through Hoil, you're spamming your abilities. There's going to be times where you don't have abilities at all. When you pick up an Orb of Power, you gain a reduction to all abilities on cooldown. Plus, earlier in the build, thanks to uh, the Echo of Starvation, whenever you pick up an Orb of Power, you also get Devour, which means you also get health back whenever you pick up an Orb of Power. So Absolution is actually doing more than one thing for you on your build it's helping you regain your your uh, it's helping you regain your abilities for the ability spam and it's also helping you get chunks of health back so if you choose to run echo of starvation i highly recommend running absolution if you choose not to use echo of starvation consider recuperation and then maybe orbs of restoration picking up a small Picking up an orb of power grants a small amount of energy to the ability with the least energy. This generally will probably most likely go to your class ability. Or it'll go to your melee generally. But it just depends on where you are on your ability cycle right there and how you choose to do it. This is what you do most likely if you do choose to not run Echo of Starvation. So just keep that in mind. If you do run Echo of Starvation, there's no point in doing it. There's no point in doing uh, recuperation. So just keep that in mind because it's redundant. We're going to go to the Titan leg piece here for the Void build. Simple. I'm using Powerful Attraction. Automatically collects nearby orbs of power when you activate your class ability. You're spamming your class ability a lot, so you want to get any orb of power orbs of power to come to you as soon as you can. And since we're using a lot of grenade regen, we want to consider either double bomber or maybe one bomber, one outreach. It just depends on how you choose how uh, how you want to spend your energy here. I think it's perfectly fine to use double bomber because that uh, weakening for the grenade is going to be very important, especially for higher end content. Um, the void build. I think is still perfectly fine and capable of being ran in higher end content, things like GMs and things like Master Raids. I think it's still really good. It was nerfed, I think, at the beginning of Lightfall, if not at the beginning of Witch Queen. It's been that long, I can't remember. But even after the nerf, it's still pretty good. So I highly recommend uh, giving this build a try. And now I will go over the arc version of this build. So now we're going to break down the arc abilities, aspects, and fragments. So I personally run Thunder Crash. I think Thunder Crash just has the best overall burst damage 
for single target, and that's just what I prefer. I prefer it that way. I can use Heart of Inbos Light, and if it's in content where I can swap my exotics out where the loadouts aren't locked, I can swap to Curus of the Falling Star, so that way I can do major Thunder Crash damage. So that's why I have T-Crash on. Otherwise, if you want to go for more of an ad clear role, you could go with Fist of Havoc. But in my opinion, you can just use Thunder Crash for single target damage. I think that's just better. We're, again, we're going to go with Rally Barricade, same concept as earlier. It has a lower base cooldown than Towering Barricade, so you want that because it helps you spam abilities more often. Lower cooldown, once again, the jump of your choice. I'm going with Thunderclap for the melee. It technically has a longer range of uh, being able to kill an enemy from further away. It's not super safe to use, especially in high-end content, but I would rather choose to use it, especially more so on smaller enemies, smaller ads, things like that, to red bars. And then I'm personally using Pulse Grenade because Pulse Grenade is a grenade that sits out, does a little AoE. It resembles the Vortex Grenade fairly, fairly alike. For our aspects, we're going to be using Touch of Thunder. And Touch of Thunder with the Pulse Grenade creates Onic Traces periodically as it damages targets and increases damage in, over time. So Pulse Grenade gets more damage. And whenever it ticks damage, it creates an Onic Trace. Onic Traces come to us and it gives us ability energy. So that's going to be part of what helps us gain ability energy back while using Hoil. And then we're going to have the aspect knock out critically, wounding a target or breaking their shields, infuses your melee attacks with arc energy, increases your melee range, distance, and damage for a short time. Defeating targets with a melee attack starts health regen and makes you amplified. Knockout can actually be kind of a saving grace for an emergency situation in PvE. If you're in higher end content, if you're put into a situation where you need knockout to save you, it possibly could save you but you kind of have a positioning problem if you're being put in a place to use knockout in the first place but still can be a saving grace especially for uh, content that's closer to atlas spark of ions defeating a jolted target creates an ionic trace so this is going to be another way to create ionic traces to gain ability energy back if you use something like volt shot it will and get kills with it you will proc Spark of Ions, and that will help you gain your energy back even more. So, using a Volt Shot weapon, highly recommend. Volt Shot Primary specifically. Spark of Shock, your Art Grenades, Jolt Targets. This is another way to Jolt Targets to defeat them and get Ionic Traces to have them come back to you for your ability regen. Spark of Magnitude, your lingering art grenades have extended duration. Pulse is one of these grenades, so it has a longer duration. Longer duration means it should have more ticks, so there should, it sh therefore it should do, it should apply more damage and potentially jolt targets for longer, so that way you can get more ionic traces to come to you. Spark of Resistance, while surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage. You want the extra DR for PvE. I think this is just a no-brainer spark or a fragment to pick up for, especially for high-end PV. So let's go with the stat distrib now. Um, just like before, we want low mobility on resilience. We want tier 10 and we want to prioritize this, prioritize this the most on Titan. Again, 30% damage reduction to your target, This to you. This is also going to be how you get your class ability cooldown quicker. Recovery. You want to have it moderate, so that way you can get some sort, uh, you can have a little bit more survivability in your kit. We're going to be running fairly high discipline, so that way it goes a little bit more easily back into the ability spam. I'm going to be running fairly low intellect, and then I'm going to be running uh, moderately high uh, strength as well, so that way you can have that thunderclap back quicker to help you cycle through your abilities with Heart of the Mist Light. Now let's go over the armor mods. So for the helmet piece, I personally like running 
heavy ammo finder you can also keep the same school of thought that we did on void and use assets to assets that's just up to you if you do uh, if you do heavy ammo finder you can consider running heavy ammo scout as well if you want to run a kinetic or harmonic siphon you still have the armor slot to use If you want to use an arc primary, I recommend using a uh, harmonic siphon. If you're planning on using a kinetic primary, I highly recommend using kinetic siphon. Completely depends on what primary you choose. To the arm piece, like we talked about earlier, I'm a sent for fastball. That's what I'm going to use. I plan on getting grenade final blows, so we're going to be using firepower to get orbs of power on grenade final blows. Bolstering detonation grants class ability energy when you cause damage with a grenade. So we're going to be getting class ability when we are doing more damage with our pulse grenade. Going over to the chest piece, like we talked about before, once again, I like using charged up, increases the amount of armor charge stacks that I can carry by one, and then I'm, then I'm leaving two slots open for up to a four energy to be able to match uh, resistances for the activity. Let's go over to the leg piece. Same concept as earlier, we're running stacks on stacks to gain one additional armor charge stack for every armor charge stack I gain. And then we're running kind of the same concept as earlier with absolution. Reducing all ability cooldowns each time I pick up an orb of power. If you want a little bit more survivability in the kit, I recommend running recuperation and innervation or recuperation and orbs of restoration. If you're having a hard time feeling like you're if you have if you feel like you're having a hard time surviving, I think this can be a way to go as well. And then for the class item. I personally recommend running utility kickstarts. That way you can cycle through your class ability quicker, get a faster cooldown on it, using the Reaper mod to gain an orb of power every time you get a weapon kill immediately after using your class ability. And I'm also using the last slot available personally for bomber so that way when i i can cheat the grenade cooldown a little bit more every time i use my class ability so that's going to be it for the builds if you have any questions or, or comments let me know down in the comment section below if there's any variation of the armor mods that you like to run let me know down in the comments thank you for watching and as always have a good one